this is Travis at Three Corners Farm. And today I'm putting up the woven wire fence to block off our garden where the hoop house is going to go. And mainly this fence is just to keep the mini horse and two goats from getting over to where the hoop house is. I don't need them jumping on it. And there might be some stuff planted outside, more like flowers and, and some other summer vegetables. But uh, I'm using this out of stuff that we have around from the last couple of years. And you can see this fence is too tall for my uh, post. Because when I bought this, it was the only fence they had a year ago. So what I'm going to end up going to do is from here, I'm going to probably cut this line and fold it over. That way I can still use my bob wire for the top line. And all that does is in case the, the big horse gets in here in this run for the mini horse, and she puts her head on top, she can't just push this woven wire down real easy. With the bob wire, it kind of gives it a little more protection from the bigger animals if she gets in here. But uh, it's happened once. She's ran through the electric fence in the winter time. And the only tools I really use is I use this style fence stretcher instead of the ones made for this. I have my hammer. And then uh, my favorite fencing tools of all time are these old ones. They don't, you can't find this style. But as I go, I'm going to start rolling this out. And then I'll show you how I attach it. So I'm going to keep uh, moving my fence down and uh, see how this goes. Then uh, there's one more thing I do here to help stop the fence from falling on me. Have some of these little pieces of wire left over that I wrap on the, the T-post to the, the woven fence here. And it'll just help stop it from falling over as I unroll it. And it's easier when the fence is the right height. done rolled all the way down and I just went around my corner so just to show you what I've done here in this corner this is how I like to start my corners I've cut two of these ribs off the end and I just wrap it around all the way down every one of these I wrap it down and I'll come back later and tighten these up so they look real nice uh, once I get the fence exactly where and I do put a few staples in the end just to hold it in as I'm tightening it come in and I'm gonna cut I'm going to be cutting this wire here, right here, and I'm going to fold this down. So I got that bent over. Later, I said I'll tighten this up, and once I start finishing up this end and getting it stapled, and I'm going to start tightening up the fence and start pulling it and getting it adjusted to get some of the slack out. And I do have two good little mounds that's going to cause the fence to kick out of the bottom, which is fine for this, for what I'm using this for. If I was using this for cattle, I would actually have to dig a trench so the fencing could go into the ground. And you might want to know why I have my bob wire here before I even start pulling is I use the bob wire fence to give me my straight line for my T-post. I usually run it and that's how I get my T-post line. And then I usually end up using it. All right, here we go. Hopefully I have an angle that you guys can see. So basically I'm going to take some of this first slack out. Everything's a little icy. There we go. So I have pulled about I don't know, six, seven inches out of slack. Now I'm going to walk up the line and adjust it a little. And all I'm doing is just trying to get the fence kind of close to where I want it. Now we're getting some tension. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more around this corner, but uh, not too much. Cause I got quite a bit of tension just in this section. Maybe I won't. That's it. I can even see I'm starting to move these posts a little. These are an inch and a half staples. This shouldn't move too much. If I got where it needed to be. There, see? And I didn't miss that. I went ahead and shut off and just finished building all the fencing through here. Um, 
I decided to cut that top piece off just because I didn't want to waste the time to try to tie it flat. So now it looks just like a normal fence. I have my bob wire here. It's my last one to put together. And this is my last post to put my C-clips on. And then uh, we'll be done. I got both ends all tied up. As you see the bob wire stretched. And what I ended up doing, since I didn't have a big enough nail, uh, I got one of my Allen wrenches that I don't really use. It's just some miscellaneous one I have. And all you do is you hook the clip, run it around. With the Allen wrench, you want the, the part that's sticking out, the L. Just like that, turn it. Um, if I'm working on some other fences, I need this super tight. And then I'd use my pliers and I'd crimp this other side, but I don't need it for this fence. I'll show you one more here. Get the fence slid up. Slide my wrench in there. There. I'm going to put uh, three more on this one and it'll be done. And that's it for the fence on this side. And when my wedge lock comes in, I'll show a video on putting the wedge lock in and finishing off that last piece. And then this will be fenced off and we'll be ready to start prepping for the hoop house. I hope you liked the video and uh, you can watch for the next video coming out. Hopefully another week will be me finishing that end of the fence off. And then this will be all locked in from the end.